There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go. I was raised in a black Baptist church and pretty much a country town, um, working class folk. And so what we had, I mean, the black church was what we had. It was, it, was, it was our community, it was our rock, it was our foundation, because we knew how to pool our resources and make it work. Our pastor at the time actually um, pastored our church for 42 years. And so we are blessed as a family, personally, um, that he baptized pretty much everybody in my family. Being in the church, music was a way to be ushered into um, the presence of the holy. Um, most of the traditional hymns that um, have been now long gone are still hymns that are very important to me today because it helped to shape who I am. But if there is a song that continues to resonate with me, it would be the song, My God is Real. That first verse is so important to me. There are some things I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go, but this one thing I know for sure, that God is real for I can feel him deep within. I identify specifically as a heterosexual male with a trans experience. As a young child, I knew that there was something different about me. My mother's single mother, when I was born, my sister was 17 years old, getting ready to go to college, and so it was the church that helped to raise me. When my mother had to work, there would be ladies in the church who would take care of me, and so I've never not known church. And at the same time, as I was growing as a child, even in my, my younger years, 8, 9, 10, um, I knew that I was different. I wasn't like the girls, but I liked the girls. And so as I began to grow and do the same thing like Playhouse and realize and that whatever was a Playhouse moment, um, that I was, I, was, I was the husband, I was the daddy, I was the, the, the male of the family. And so for me personally, I can't say it was a huge struggle for me. It's just something that was. How I was able to reconcile it was I had a moment alone in my own bedroom one evening and simply said, okay, God, this is what's happening up here, and I know this to be real for me, but I also know you to be real. And if this is not the way it's supposed to be, I need you to make it plain for me. And from that conversation, from that little prayer, literally, as I have grown and as I continue to mature, I became even more so convicted and convinced that I've always been a heterosexual male, and it was okay. God lauded and applauded that, that, that I could ask the question at such a young age, and be able to say, God, if, it, if this is not the way it's supposed to be, reveal it to it, show it to me, change it. And when it didn't happen, as a matter of fact, the more I understood who I was in my own skin and in my own psyche, the more at peace I became with myself, and the more I believe God was pleased with my acceptance of me. I never came out, so to speak, when I was birthed into the church, and as I grew in the church, and as I worked in the church, and participated in various ministries of the church. Other than Sunday, whenever people encountered me, I was usually in jeans or something to that nature. Um, by the time I got to high school and was doing that gig, I had keys. The traditional thing back in the day was to have keys on your belt loop out of your pocket. That was just me. And so while it was never spoken about, was never talked about, it was readily assumed by lots of folk um, that I was a lesbian. And so it was never a conversation. But it was never any space or place in the context of that community, the church community, where I ever felt rejected. Our pastor um, at the time was a rock for me um, and continues to be a central role model for me. He never ever preached a word of judgment or condemnation that I can remember all my years growing up in the church. And whenever we had encounters with one another, he was one to, to always give me a hug. Sugar Pie was his nickname for everybody. Um, he never treated me as other or as different. I was a part of the family, and I've always appreciated them. And I've said for many years, my experience in the church and my growth and my youth um, was an exception rather than a rule, and I feel very fortunate and very blessed um, because of that. And so when I have encounters or conversations with individuals who share with me or share with us um, at MCC their experiences growing up as people of color in their churches um, of, of their youth, and to be told how folks would pray over them or pray for them, or how they would be called out in the context of a sermon and be asked to come to the altar and to have people literally um, judge them in front of hundreds of people and rebuke them, and to be able to 
to sit with them as they cry that pain out and really trying to understand and make sense of the fact that this was not God who was speaking or individuals who were raised in the church and are still active in the church yet because others know that they are like that they are shunned they can be involved but they are shunned and they may go to their church um, of their choice or the church that they love so to speak in the morning and then in some cases end up in MCC and I can't count the number of times of conversations that I've had with individuals particularly um, people of African descent um, who have been beaten up for being all of who they are um, because of an understanding or a reading of the Bible that if anything is still suspect and, um, and we spend lots of time walking with people through the sacred text, six texts, um, that um, eventually as we spend time with them and walk with them they find the freedom that they're looking for because they're here, able to hear a different voice and that voice leads them to a place of liberation. We're, we're all sacred beings created by a holy God. And I believe that when God created all of us, God called it good from the inside out. And I do believe, as the psalmist wrote, that, that God knew me before I was formed, before I was knit together in my mother's womb. And that God knew all about me before I would know all about me. And because I understand that to be true, I really encourage my colleagues not to invest a lot of time, a lot of energies, trying to recreate or trying to change individuals into their understanding of who God is or what the Bible says God is and to simply treat another human being as another manifestation of the divine order in, in the world. And how we learn to love each other, we learn to love each other as God loves us. We're not perfect at doing it, but I think the first step is in recognizing that if I can honor you for who you are and who you're going into all of who you are, and if you can honor me and respect me and love me for my journey, then we can go a long way and accomplish a lot for the dominion of God. That's a part of knitting together this mosaic that we try to create. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real. For I can feel him in my soul.